Hello and welcome to Skill of the Week for Greek pottery. So you're going to learn how to make a Greek pot using coil building techniques. The things that you're going to need are a bat, which is just a portable working surface for your pot, and you're not going to take it off of here until it's done. You're going to need a needle tool. It's basically a needle stuck into a dowel. Now, the needle is very sharp. Please use it appropriately. Then you're going to need a cleaning tool. One side has a blade for cutting. The other side is curved so that uh, you can carve, you can clean, you can do whatever you need with that. Okay, so we're going to need both of those tools. You will also need to have a bag of clay. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so each person will need their own table because you're going to need to you need to be able to spread out and work efficiently. Okay, and if you're moving the table a lot while you're rolling your coils, you're going to be disturbing somebody else while they're trying to build their pot. So one person per table works really, really well. Okay, what I like to do is get probably about a baseball-sized chunk of clay out and pound it together. Okay, while I'm doing that, I want to make sure that my bag of clay always stays closed. Okay. And I like to really pound it down so that it is nice and solid. So it doesn't have any air bubbles in it. Okay, I'm going to scoot my table forward so that you can see a little bit better. Okay, so you can see the size of the clay that you're going to need. And you take your bat, you put that right down in the center, and you start pounding with the heel of your hand around and around, but not like right up against the edge, because see what happens? It smashes it down, and then it's really unusable clay. So I'm just going to take that right off because it's not usable anymore. Okay, so we're just going to pound it around. Not really, really hard, just hard enough to push the clay down slightly. Now I'm starting to get a little air bubble, so I'm just going to poke that because I don't want any air bubbles in my clay. Now I'm going to flip it because that's going to make it more even. And you want to have about 3 eighths of an inch thickness in your clay, okay? And you want it to be even all the way around. So if I hold my fingers on the inside and pull them out, they're about the same thickness as the edges are. And that's what you want. You don't want a dome in the center. I want to make sure I have it nice and flat. If there are any uh, pieces of anything in it that you don't want, like these little white pieces in here. That might be plaster. I definitely do not want those in there. So I'm just going to take those out. Okay. And I'm going to get a tub. Just one of these little yogurt containers or uh, uh, any, any of the water containers that I have in the sink. And we're going to use the knife end of the cleaning tool. And we're going to just hold this gently on here and we're going to go around in a circle. cutting through to the bat. Okay, try to keep your blade upright. If you tip it in too much, you're going to have a smaller bottom and you don't want that. Okay. So now we can set that down. It's a pretty good thickness. It's pretty even all the way around, so it's going to support the base of your pot. Okay, and this little piece that I tore off of there, I can just incorporate that in to the rest of my clay. I'm going to move that off to the side for now. And I'm going to smash this all together because, again, you want to have your clay all incorporated. You don't want to just fold it over and then start rolling a, a coil because that's going to cause it to twist. It's going to cause it to get air bubbles and that kind of thing. So I like to first start to create kind of a hot dog shape just because I want to have something that I can get my hands on and start to make a coil pretty easily. Okay, now you have to have your fingers spread out. Now I tend to put more pressure on it as I'm pulling back. And you want to be concentrating on this because if you're looking all around at your neighbors while you're trying to roll an even coil, you're going to end up with a coil that is flat or it's uneven. And you want to really have even coils. That's what's going to make your pot look nice 
and it's going to give it an even top. Okay, so what I'm seeing here is this side is starting to look like a strap. You can see by the end, see how it's an oval rather than a circle? So I'm going to address that right away. I'm going to tip it up on end, and I'm just going to kind of tap it back down so that it creates kind of a squarish shape. And that will get it back to the shape that I want. Now, once it gets pretty long, I'm only going to have to get it around here. So I don't want it to get too long and get out of control. So I'm going to just take this piece off and set it to the side because it's the same shape as this and the same width. So I'm actually going to make another coil with this pretty easily. I'm going to start at the center, work my way out to the edges so that I have a nice even coil. Now I'm going to look up and down the coil as I'm rolling it to make sure that it's all a pretty even coil all the way around. Okay, nice and even. Now, if it's got any hollow areas, like this looks like it's getting hollow, I'm going to take that off because we don't want any hollow pieces in our coil pot. So now the next step is to hatch with the cleaning or the needle tool. When you hatch, you're just scratching into the surface. And what that does is it creates this roughed up area, kind of like Velcro that when you stick your clay down to it, it'll really grip it, okay? Now, when I hatch, I hatch it pretty rough. I'm digging in there. I'm not being all delicate or anything. I'm really tearing up the clay because you really want that clay to grip. And I like to go at least a couple of times around <clears throat> to really get, get a nice rough surface. So see how rough that is? That's what you want, okay? Because what you want to do next is you're going to press this right down on top. And I like to put my finger against the edge, okay, and push this down as I attach it. And I turn it and press it down, okay? So it's going to be kind of flattening that coil. And you're not going to get quite the height that you would if you kept it round, but you are going to get a coil that really sticks down tight. When I try and lift it up, it's actually lifting up the whole thing. And I really don't want it to lift up the whole thing, but I do want it to make sure that it's stuck down tight. So from this point, I have another section of coil that's really pretty long. It's going to easily fit on there. So I'm going to go ahead and hatch this one. Now, again, this one is going to go straight on top of the previous coil. It's not going to go out or in or anything like that. And I like to stand over the top of my coils anytime I'm building a coil pot and make sure that I keep it round. Whoopsie, sorry about that. That one kind of flattened the side a little bit, so I'm going to have to manipulate it and make sure I get this nice and hatched. <clears throat> okay, then again I'm going to I'm going to start a new area. That's where my seam was before and I don't want to have it right on top of that same area, so I'm going to press it down Okay, I can test it. Okay, it's just pulled right off. So that tells me the dry air in here is starting to dry my clay. So what I'm going to do is get a, a tub of water. And I only need a little bit. I don't need very much because too much water can make your coils slick and fall off. But just the right amount will make them kind of grip your clay a little. So notice I just grabbed a little, threw it on there, and now I'm going to hatch again. Not too much, okay? So now I'm going to go ahead and stick it down again. And I'm not pinching the clay, I'm pushing down. I'm just putting my finger on the side, okay, right here, to make sure that I have them stacked right on top of the other. And I can hear it squishing down into that clay because it has just enough moisture on there to grip that clay. Okay, so now I can try and lift it up. It's not lifting off. So at this point, I can attach all three of these layers of clay. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move this closer so you can see what I'm doing when I attach this clay. <coughs> I'm going to hold the outside while I take the back of my fingernail and I'm going to press down and into the base of the pot. Down into the base of the pot. And I'm going to work my way around. I like to turn the bat because it makes it much easier. 
but I'm supporting that outside edge with this hand. If I don't support it, then I'm going to end up with a plate because all these coils are just going to lay out flat. And you want to make sure that they are coming straight up. Okay, and then you can see there is my vertical smoothing and it's not smooth, okay? It's just attaching the clay. So on the second step, you're gonna do a horizontal smoothing. You're gonna hold onto the edge again and you're going to smooth it out with the pad of your finger or you can use the back of your fingernail if you want. But I like to use the pad because then I can get a really smooth section with no seams poking through you want to have all this cleaned up, and then I'm going to clean the bottom of the pot up too. Okay, so that's nice and smooth. Got a little ball of clay right there. Okay, no seams are showing, and that's what we want. And then we're going to do the exact same thing to the outside of the clay. But now we're going to hold the inside. We're going to press down and out, kind of like little L motions. Okay, I'm holding the inside, keeping it from pushing in. And you can see I use different techniques. I might put my knuckle in there with my thumb on top to kind of make sure everything is holding, or I might put my fingers in. Whatever works more comfortably for you, as long as you are supporting the inside, you'll be all right. Okay, so now I've done my vertical, okay, and it looks like a little volcano or something, and now I'm going to do the horizontal. And I like to use a strong finger, like the middle finger, because it can really press uh, all of those coils together and all that clay to make sure it's nice and smooth. So you can see why we need to make the coil fairly large because we actually take a little of that clay away as we are creating the coil pot. Okay, so there's the vertical smoothing. And you can now see there are no coils showing, no seams. Okay. It's not perfectly smooth, but you can smooth it a little bit more as you go putting in other coils. Okay, so now at this point for a Greek pot, we're going to start to go outward. And we need to build that towards the outside of our coil. Okay, so I'm gonna to hatch towards the outside. And since I worked with this quite a bit, I might need to put a little bit of moisture on like I did the last time kind of dry in here. Okay, so there is hatching towards the outside. I'm going to grab a little moisture, put it on just a little. Don't overdo it. A little is good, a lot is too is bad. Okay, it can actually make your pot collapse and you don't want that. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and use this, but I wanted to show you what's happening with the coil. See these little cracks that are happening when I start to turn it? That means the clay is starting to get pretty dry. So Anytime you have clay out sitting out for quite a while, it's just going to sit and get dry. So you don't want to have more than what you need. So what I did was I just grabbed a little bit of water and I just smoothed it onto the clay coil. Okay, so now I'm going to place it towards the outside, pressing it in. And I can actually watch that press into that hatched area and squish in. You can see the moisture come out. Now I have a little bit of space here that I need to grab a little extra clay, but this coil is the one that I started out with, so I can actually roll this out to this size and put a piece in there. So I'm going to put this off to the side, make sure my hands aren't too wet. If you have too wet of an area to work with, your coil is just going to slop all over the place. So again, we want to roll this out to the same width and consistency as that first coil that we did. You want to have consistent rolling. You don't want any twisting in your clay. So you want a nice, smooth coil. Okay, and that's about the size that it was before. So now I can press this into the previous coil, press this on the outside, and I like to overlap just slightly and pinch the clay off. 
and then smooth it in. Okay, so when you look from above, you can see that it's round. Okay, now this first step, I'm going to go ahead and just do the single coil, smoothing it in so you can see what we do. Now we're going to actually cradle underneath and the side, and we only need to come down to that previous coil and smooth it in. We don't need to go all the way to the bottom like we did before. But you definitely need to hold on to your clay so that it doesn't go too far out. If you push too hard, you know, and you have no support, it's just going to lay over like that, and you don't want that to happen. So you want to make sure that you are paying close attention, smoothing it in, but you're holding on to it, not letting it get anywhere. And once you get that vertical, then you can start at the bottom and start to work your way up in a horizontal smoothing, smoothing the whole thing. Some of that clay might go away into your finger, and you'll have to have little balls that you take off of there, but that's okay. Again, I'm really holding on to the side because I'm pushing on that clay to make sure it smooths in. Okay, and once I get that all smooth, you can see that it's got a nice round shape. Okay, and we're ready for the next coil. This one's already built, it's ready to go, so I can just go ahead and put it right on top of this one. And we're, again, we're going out because we're making that crater or amphora shape. And the nice thing about putting that coil on to the outside is that now it's really easy to put it to the outside because it's already starting to move out. Okay, this coil was pretty wet, so I'm gonna go ahead without any moisture and just put that coil right on this coil. You wanna make sure you're seeing that clay go out in all directions. Oh, I'm sorry, you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to smooth that outside edge right there. So we'll take care of that in this next step. Okay, so I wanna make sure that it's nice and tight on there, it's not moving around, because when I go to smooth, I don't wanna see any air holes through the coils. Okay, so it's still nice and round, but you can see that it's moving out. See, because this was the previous layer, and we want to continue to see previous layers so that we can build the structure. And you can see it here, too. You can see it coming out. So I'm going to go ahead and smooth that inside. And it really doesn't take very long. You can build these pretty quickly. The more practice that you put into it, the better you'll become. And I'm really holding on. I'm holding on not only to the side, but to the top to just really solidify the structure and make sure that it doesn't go anywhere. Okay, now. Okay, I've got both the vertical and the horizontal done and you can still see it coming out, but it's a gentle slope. It's not flat by any stretch of the imagination, okay? So now to smooth the outside, I need to really protect the inside because I don't want to push so hard that it comes up in a cylinder, okay? So I need to hold on to that outside. Again, I'm going to do my vertical press. And I like to put my thumb on it and my fingers just to really hold on to it. Once it gets to the tip of my fingers, I need to move the bat and move my hand. I like to bend over and really look to make sure I'm getting all of those coils smoothed in together. Okay, so now you can see I have all that in a vertical smoothing all the way around. Of course, it's not perfectly smooth. That's just basically to attach it. And then we're going to do the horizontal. And, we're, and this is where you probably are going to get pieces of clay coming off. And that's why you don't want to make your coils super, super skinny, because they're going to have to be able to handle a lot of this um, moving around with force 
because I'm really using a, a stiff finger to really push into this clay and smooth it around. That's how you get those coils to be all smooth and uh, attached together. Okay, so now you can see that it's pretty even all the way around, and that's from even coils. If you have a coil that's fat on one side and skinny on the other, you're going to have a really uneven top, and you want to have a pretty smooth top. Okay? So from this stage, you would continue to put coils out, okay? And then if you're building a crater, you would go a couple of, once you get out of far enough, you're going to go a couple more up, straight up, just to kind of contain it, and then a couple in and one out for the rim and then build your handles. For the amphora, it's got the same basic structure. You're going to come out, but this time you're you're going to come up a little bit sooner and then you're going to come in and then make your your neck. And coming in on the the coils is the same process as when we came out, except you're going to be putting your coil on the inside. And I'm just going to show you not I'm not going to attach it or anything, but I'm going to show you that it's just going to be laying like this, okay? So you would hatch it, and then you would bring it slightly to the inside. So that you can see, see that, that curve to the inside? Okay, I'm just going to break this one off so you can see what I'm talking about. And then the next one would go to the inside, okay? So you can see as the structure goes, okay? it's coming up into the inside. Okay, so easy to build coil pots and make any shape that you want as long as you follow the basic rules of support, uh, vertical smoothing, and horizontal smoothing. And you'll have a really nice sturdy pot that you can use for years to come.